we're going to look at the two major forms of quadratic functions and we'll focus this specific video on the vertex form here. So the two major forms of a quadratic function are the vertex form, which is the first one listed here, and the standard form, which is listed second. So the question is asked, in these equations a, b, and c, h, and k represent constants, but a, so this front multiplier here and here, cannot be equal to zero. And they ask why? Well, if a is zero, then that causes the square term to be zero. In other words, there would be no square term. So we would be left with a linear equation at that point instead of a parabola. Uh, the graph would be a line, not a parabola. So that's why a has to be positive. So comparison of the characteristics. Again, today in this specific video, we're looking at the vertex form. So you see the vertex form is set up like this. y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k and the vertex is given in vertex form that's why it's named the vertex form so the vertex will be h comma k so if you notice in the form the h is being subtracted so the sign of the x coordinate of your vertex will be opposite from the form so if I have a negative 2 here I would have a positive 2 here if I have a positive 2 here, I would have a negative 2 here. So the signs will be opposite between the actual vertex x coordinate and the form for your uh, function. The y coordinate of the vertex is given by the k value here. So whatever is being added or subtracted over uh, to the side. And it keeps its sign. So if I have a plus 2 here, then I have a y coordinate of 2 for the vertex. If I have a negative 2 here, then I have a negative 2 as the y coordinate of my vertex. The axis of symmetry is just x equals this number right here. Again, the signs will be opposite. So the x coordinate of the vertex is always the same number for the axis of symmetry. And we always specify the axis of symmetry with x equals whatever that number is. It's an imaginary vertical line. The y-intercept, we uh, can plug in 0. So input a 0 in for x right here because the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. And evaluate the function and we can get that value. And then we can always, once we have one value, because parabolas are symmetrical about the axis of symmetry, if we know one point, we can reflect that point and find another. That's what they're commenting on here. And then for x-intercepts, I'll show you how to get those in the calculator uh, later. So we're actually going to be using the calculator a little bit today. So let's look at this first example. I've copied down the vertex form here. I'll write it off to the side. So the first thing we want to identify is when we're looking at our vertex form is the h and k value. So looking at our equation or our function here, we have a negative one there. So that means my h value is positive one. Remember the h will be opposite of whatever's right there, opposite sign. The k value will be this exact number here off to the side, so that would be a negative 4. So that means my vertex is at 1, comma, negative 4. The vertex form gives you the vertex. That's why it has that name. Axis of symmetry is always x equals h. So for us, that's x equals 1. It's the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we have an axis of symmetry of x equals 1. For the y-intercept, we're going to plug in a or input in a 0 for x. So we're evaluating f of 0. So we're plugging in a 0 for x. So I get 0 minus 1 quantity squared, <coughs> subtract 4. So negative, this ends up being negative 1. You square a negative 1, you get a positive 1. You subtract 4 from that, you get negative 3. So the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 3. So if the y-intercept is 0, negative 3, we have a point that's symmetrical to that. So if we have a, an x value of 0 here for this point, 0, comma, negative 3. So if we uh, start our sketch, I'm going to make a rough sketch off to the side here. So here's our axis of symmetry at x equals positive 1. We have the point 0, negative 3, so uh, about, we'll call it right here. So 0, negative 3 is there. That means the other side of the axis of symmetry is going to be the uh, corresponding point. 
So if we reflect that over this line, it ends up being right here, and that would be 2 comma negative 3. And if uh, the y-intercept here is 0, negative 3. So if you notice, we're 1 away from the axis of symmetry to the left, and we're going to be 1 away to the right, and we'll share that y-coordinate. So that point would be 2 comma negative 3. The x-intercepts, we can put in our calculator and find those. So I'm going to minimize this, um, pan this over, and we'll enter this function in. So we have, enter it like we see it, x, subtract 1 quantity squared, subtract 4, and we'll graph it. I'm going to do a zoom 6, so I'll make sure and have a standard window. So we can see the um, x-intercepts right here as it crosses the x-axis. So if we use our graph, you can use, there are two ways to do it. The easy way I'm going to show you first. So we go to y equals, we graph a horizontal line of y equals 0 and y2. When I graph that, it's just going to put a line on top of the x-axis. I'm going to thicken that line up so I can see it, so you can see it when we graph it. So you see there the horizontal line of y equals 0 shot across there. So we have a line on top of the x-axis. So now I can do second trace. Whoops, try that again. Second trace. And I want to find the intersection of those two graphs, the line y equals 0 and my parabola. So I'm going to choose option 5. Calculator asked me lower left for the first curve. It says y1, the parabola. Yes, calculator, that's right. So I hit enter. Second curve, it says y2, which is the line y equals 0. Yes, that's the one I want you to find, the intersections of. For the guess, I'm going to move my cursor. You can see the cursor moving left and right as I move left and right. On top of this x-intercept, also called a 0, also called a root, hit enter, and it finds it, and it's negative 1, 0. So we'll write that one in here, negative 1, comma 0. And we'll do the same thing again. Second trace, option 5 for intersect. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. So I hit enter twice. On guess, this is where you need to move your cursor or type in a number that's close. So I just arrowed my cursor over on top of that 0, hit enter, and it finds it to be 3 comma 0. The other way you can do it, and if you've already followed along with me here, you don't have to do it this way, but I just want to show you. Second trace, option 2 for 0, because we're finding a 0, you can also use that. For left bound, you get left of the 0, so this is left of this specific 0. Hit enter for right bound, you arrow to the right of the 0, hit enter twice, and it gives you 3, 0. You can do the same thing and find the other one. Most students don't like this one. They like the intersection better. I don't care which one you use. So left bound, I get left of the 0, I'm left of it. Enter, right bound, get right of the 0, I'm right of it. Hit enter twice and it's negative 1. So we get the same thing either way. Third method, when you have perfect points, you go in your table and you look for a y value of 0. When I'm on the x-axis, my y coordinate is 0. So there it is, 3 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. That only works when you have whole numbers for your x-intercepts. So we have an additional example here. And the first thing that we want to do is we're in vertex form, so we want to identify that h and k value. So h comma k. Well, remember that h will always be the opposite of this sign. So there is a plus 1 there, so my h value is negative 1. The k value is this number off to the side, and it will be that exact sign. So my vertex is negative 1 comma 3. And remember the vertex form is y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k. The subtraction sign in the form makes you choose the opposite sign of whatever's right there. Axis of symmetry is always x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. So x equals negative 1. That vertex is in the center horizontally of the parabola, so it's right on the axis of symmetry. So if you have the x coordinate of the vertex, you have the axis of symmetry value. If you have the value of the axis of symmetry, therefore you have the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, y 
intercept. So that's where we evaluate the function at an x value of 0. So f of 0, we're going to input a 0 for x, and I'm going to take one step at a time. So 0 plus 1 is 1, and then you square 1. 1 squared is still 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so we get 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. So the y-intercept is 0, 5. So let's start plotting these. We have a vertex of negative 1, 3 right here. We have an axis of symmetry of x equals negative 1 through here. Actually, I'll use a color that will show up a little better. So here's our axis of symmetry through there. And we have a y-intercept of 0, 5 right here. We'll use blue right here, 0, 5. So that means the reflection point is right there at negative 2, 5. It's much easier to see that if you have it uh, graphed. Negative uh, 2, 5 is that reflection point, the x-intercepts. So if you notice here, based on the way this graph is, the vertex is right here, and I have points here, so that means this we'll sketch in a better graph in a minute. It's going to open up like this. So that tells us that we have no x-intercepts, none. This graph will not cross the x-axis. They want us to make a table of values here, so we can do that. I want you to put the vertex right in the middle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So we'll put the vertex right here in this middle box with three on either side. So the vertex was negative one, three. So we'll use whole number ordered pairs just to make it easy. So going to the left, we'll have an x value of negative two, negative three, negative four. Going to the right of the vertex, we'll use zero, one, and two. All right, so we're going to manually or algebraically find one value on either side, and then we'll use our calculator for the rest. <coughs> So let's find this one. We're going to evaluate our quadratic when x is negative 2. So I'm going to uh, evaluate f of, I'm going to clear this out so we have room. So I'm going to find f of negative 2. f of negative 2 is going to be equal to 2 times the quantity negative 2 plus 1 all squared plus 3. So I'll break that down one step at a time. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So we square a negative 1, we get a positive 1. 2 times positive 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. So we have negative 2, 5. And if you notice, we already had that point right here. And then let's do uh, one other point on the right side. Well, we already have that point. It's 0, 5. So we're going to... I want us to do two points, so let's do f of 1. Let's find this one. So f of 1, scroll over here a little bit. So f of 1 is going to be equal to 2 times the quantity 1 plus 1 all squared plus 3. So that's equal to 1 plus 1 is 2. Square that, that's 4. So 2 times 4 plus 3. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3 is 11. So we have the ordered pair 1, 11. Now we can use our calculator. So we uh, go to y equals, and I'm going to scroll this back over so we can see everything. Put in our function, 2 parentheses, x plus 1 quantity squared. Remember, that's the appropriate way to say that, x plus 1 quantity squared, plus 3. Go in your table and let's get those values. So 2 comma 21 and we need an x value of negative 3 so that would be negative 3 11 and negative 4 21. And that's it for this one. We can plot these points on the ones that fit anyway. So we'll do that next. We'll plot this in now that we've got some more points. So the graph looks like that. And that's it for this example, and that's it for this video.